So it's been a busy time for the Arduino ecosystem. Qualcomm bought Arduino, and then following that, they released a new board, but not just a microcontroller board, but actually a single board computer with a microcontroller built into it. It's called the Arduino Uno Q. Now I've got several videos about it here on this channel. I've been going through the unpacking and the desktop for Linux and how you develop for it and so on. And this is my final video on the subject and it's going to answer the biggest question, the elephant in the room. Should you buy an Uno Q or should you buy a Raspberry Pi? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay then, let's get into this. So here are the two boards. You can see the Arduino on the left and the Raspberry Pi on the right. And just looking at them physically, we can see some big differences. For example, this has just got a single USB-C port on it and not much else in terms of ports that is. I was on the Raspberry Pi, you've got USB ports, you've got an ethernet port. Another thing is this, of course, is using the UNO form factor. This is using the Raspberry Pi 40 pin uh, GPIO setup. This has got a, a matrix display on it, LED matrix. This hasn't. Then, of course, you've got other things that are similar between them, like they both have a processor with, with uh, RAM and there's a Wi-Fi module and so on. And we'll dive into all these things. But two separate boards from different ecosystems and the question is which one should you get so as i mentioned both of them are single board computers they both run debian linux that's a very common factor between them and they both can connect to the outside world using general purpose input output pins gpio pins to interact with hardware like sensors leds stepper motors displays relays and whatever now one fundamental difference is the uno q uses a separate microcontroller to do this and we'll talk more about that in a minute whereas the, the raspberry pi controls it all from the same processor and both boards have wi-fi bluetooth usb and hdmi so we can see a lot of similarities between these two boards a few things that are unique on all of them as i said there's usb-c and only one of them on the arduino uno q which means you have to use a hub if you want to connect a mouse and a keyboard and a hdmi whereas you tend to get lots of ports on the raspberry pi including gigabit ethernet uh, various USB ports. Of course, both of those depend on what model you're getting because there are smaller ones with less ports on them. Uh, this has got built-in eMMC storage, 16 gigs or 32 gigs, whereas the Raspberry Pi relies on you providing a micro SD card. And as I said, there was that blue LED matrix. There's a quick connector, which enables you to very quickly connect up you know, like a temperature sensor, and that works over I squared C. But for example, if you have a Raspberry Pi 5, then you actually have access to a PCIe version 2, one lane uh, interface. So there are some differences what you get on each one. As I said, there are lots of different models of the Raspberry Pi. So let's quickly look at those. So here's our Arduino Uno Q, four Cortex A53 cores, clocked at two gigahertz, and you have to get two gigabytes of RAM, which is one I've been using, four gigabytes of RAM one, is a promise at the time of making this video, although it isn't out yet. And when you come to the Pi's, there are lots of them. This is only a fraction of what there actually is. You've got a Pi Zero 2W, for example, again with four Cortex A53 cores, but only one gigahertz, so half the clock speed, so you can expect half the performance, and half a gigabyte of RAM, so difference in the RAM there. Pi 3B, again, Cortex A53, 1.2 gigahertz, one gigabyte of RAM. So you're already starting to mix and match here what you might want. Then you got to a Raspberry Pi 4 Cortex A72 core, so a newer generation, lower clock speed, but of course you've got the higher uh, performance of this microarchitecture. And then there's a whole bunch of options here, one, two, four, and eight gigabytes of RAM. And then when you get to the Raspberry Pi 5 Cortex A76 core, so again, a greater generation, 2.4 gigahertz. This is the most performant one. You can just tell that just on paper. 2, 4, 8, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So, you know, you've got lots to choose from. So when you say I'm going to buy a Pi, yes, but which one? Because they all come in with different uh, specifications and of course prices which we'll look at in a minute but what does this mean for performance well it, it really does follow what you'd expect so this is the pi 2w this is a test i've got the 
this thread test tool uh, SHA256, the code is in my GitHub repository, doesn't use any hardware acceleration, just a pure C implementation of calculating uh, the, the SHA256, single threaded. I noted, I did the multi-threaded -te tests and they are basically linear. So if you go from one to four, it is linear one to four based across all the boards. So the slowest one is the Pi 2. Of course, you expect that's got the lowest clock rate at one gigahertz and half gigabyte of RAM. This is in seconds, so lower is better. Next comes the Pi 3, uh, and uh, then you get the Uno Q. Now, notice here, this is 20 seconds to complete the test. Here is 40 seconds. This is two gigahertz, this is one gigahertz. It's literally, uh, you know, double the performance purely based on the clock speed. And the 1.2 gigahertz version is here in the middle. Then we get to a Pi 4, slightly faster, even though it's only clocked at 1.8 gigahertz, does have a better CPU core, the A72. So although it's slower clock frequency, the overall performance is better. And then when you get to a Pi 5, where you're looking at 2.4 gigahertz, so you know this is literally twice as fast as an Uno Q. So it does depend on what you're looking for in terms of performance. What do you need the board for? What's it gonna have to have in terms of performance? Now, I said that also affects pricing. Now, these are all in euros because the Arduino comes from Italy, and this is the official price from Italy. And these are prices for the Raspberry Pis that I found from an official Italian uh, distributor of Raspberry Pi boards. They're probably slightly different to the official prices, and you may find them different one or two euros each way or different in dollars. But this is, gives you a rough guide. So 47 and a half euros basically and 53 and a half euros for the board depending when you get two gigabytes or four gigabytes well obviously the first pi is way cheaper than that just over 18 euros but as we saw it's the slowest of them less ram if you want to go to a pi 3b again that's going to be slightly slower but uh, you're a lot cheaper 36 uh, euros almost 37 euros and then when we get into the pi 4 and the pi 5 they've got greater performance so 50 euros for the two gigabyte one so look you're looking at 50 euros or 47 euros okay so which one are you going to pick this is a pretty good like well it's you know i've got hard now that's going to be a hard one to choose between the pi 4 2 gig and the arduino q2 uh, q gig and then if you go to the four gig one, where well, it looks like here that this price is slightly higher. This price may be wrong because it was just in a, uh, a distributed website that I found they set a price because these boards aren't available yet. Maybe they end up being higher. Again, you'll have to look at the time you buy it and uh, make your pick. But again, of course, a Pi 5 two gigabyte one is only 53 uh, euros. So what, six euros more and you get a Pi 5. Uh, again, bit of a higher price for the four gigabyte version. Again, not 100% sure on this price because it's not available yet. So as you can see, you've got a lot to choose between. And when you go up to the higher end, you're only talking a few euros each way, you know, for what you're going to pay. On top of that, of course, you've got shipping. You maybe have some import uh, charges. So that will, of course, also affect your decision. Is there a local distributor of the pies of the Arduino in your country? So you're not going to have to ship internationally. These kind of things are also important. But one thing to note is here, these two and four gigabyte versions with the prices I've been quoting, that does include 16 gigabytes of EMMC memory or 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. Basically on these ones, you're gonna have to provide a micro SD card. So that is something advantage to think about that you're getting the storage as well. But maybe you want more than 16 gigs then you're going to need to go for a pi so you can stick a bigger sd card in there so you know lots of options which is good but finding your way through that maze and finding and making the best choice uh, can be a bit tricky but what will really help in making that decision is what is this one big difference and there is one huge difference between these two uh, boards the biggest difference between them is the design philosophy and subsequently the ecosystem. The difference in the design philosophy and the ecosystem both affects hardware and software. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, for example, if you take the Arduino, yes, it's the Uno form factor. So here's the thing. Are you already in the Arduino ecosystem? Do you have Arduino shields that you've bought for other things? Do you want to use them on this new board? Well, that's a big plus point for the Arduino because you're already in the ecosystem.
But another big thing to notice is that there is a separate microcontroller that is programmed using an Arduino sketch, basically C and C++, when you're using the Arduino Uno Q. And there is Python code running on the SBC, the single board computer, the Linux side, that talks to the microcontroller over an RPC bridge. And all that programming is done via a special application called the Arduino App Lab. So basically, you're buying into this ecosystem, which is their IDE, and you're using that to program the microcontroller using the Arduino sketch, which is basically C++. You're already there because of the shield. So you're into that system. And that's a different approach than uh, the Raspberry Pi. So here's a quick diagram of that. If you've got the board here, you've got the microcontroller and you've got the uh, Dragonwing processor, which runs Linux, the Debian Linux. So this one is programmed with Python. This one is programmed with an Arduino sketch. And then they talk to each other over this bridge, which is the RPC. Uh, basically, that means that this Python program can call functions in the sketch program here. And for example, you can have one saying, turn on the LED and it will do it. So you have a Python program that says, tell the microcontroller to do something. The microcontroller runs some code that you've also written and it goes ahead and does that thing. Now that's different on the Raspberry Pi. On the Raspberry Pi, you've got these 40 GPO pins, which are kind of becoming an industry standard. Even if you buy boards from other makers, even sometimes from let's say NVIDIA and NVIDIA Jetson boards can actually have the same 40 pin layout. And there are of course a whole bunch of hats, that's hardware that you put on the top uh, that is uses that pin layout. So there are, again, there is an ecosystem with hats that you may already have. And the GPIO pins are controlled from the main processor. So you just use uh, in the programming language, you say, you know, read that uh, value, turn that on, turn that off kind of thing. Now, that does limit strict real time applications. If you're just doing, you know, sent temperature readings and then sending the results over to some kind of, uh, you know, dashboard or whatever, that doesn't matter. If you're trying to control a stepper motor and read a sensor and you're controlling it down to, you know, millimeter level, then maybe it's not going to be good enough. Maybe you do need a dedicated microcontroller. Having said that, of course, there is the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is a board with a dedicated microcontroller. And of course, you could wire it up for those two things to talk to each other over I squared C or just with kind of on off binary signals, that kind of thing. But here's the big thing. You program all of that in the language of your choice. If you like C, you can do it in C. If you like Python, you can do it in Python. If you want to do it in Rust, you can do it in Rust. If you want to do it in Go, you can do it in Go. If you want to do it in JavaScript, you can do it in Java because it's integrated fully into the Linux environment and you can turn these things on and off either using existing libraries that exist for a whole bunch of programming languages or at a low level, you can say, to the Linux, you know, do this and you can just actually access these pins and these things, these GPIO pins through the Linux interface. So any language using any tool chain, using any IDE. So you're not having to do it using the Arduino App Lab and using their IDE. So it really does depend on which system you're in. And that will really be the biggest deciding factor. And once you've decided that, then you can go back and look at the pricing and which model to get and the performance figures that you get. But really, you have to make this decision and then that will make all the other decisions much easier. OK, that's it. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Which camp are you in? Are you already in the Arduino camp? Are you already in the Raspberry Pi camp? Are you going to swap? Are you going to try? Love to hear your thoughts on all of this. OK, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.